It was fake all this time. For two decades, Patrick lived under a rock, and it made sense. He was the slowest of the group, so he both literally and figuratively lived under a rock, but not anymore. And you know what? I cannot believe I slept on this episode for two years because it's the best twist that modern SpongeBob has done recently. When did this episode come out? What could I have possibly been doing around this time? Oh. I'm so sorry. Speaking of sleep, this video was sponsored by Mantis Sleep. But before we get there, what was the change? Oh man, what time is it? This is Tony, a sea turtle who's been asleep for 30 years. We see his entire personality within these first few scenes, enjoying a lot of the classics, living quite humbly, having a false sense of strength, but still comfortable in his own shell. He's overslept and is rushing to meet the girls he promised to hang out with at Goo Lagoon. What does this have to do with Patrick's rock though? This is Pat. Wait, why am I introducing Patrick? You all know him, he used to be really funny, I mean he still has his moments sometimes, but largely he just eats, is dumb for slapstick, and while that doesn't change too much here, they reeled it back. And that's what made me enjoy this episode a lot more. What do you get when you mix an easily irritable but chill, confident, slow moving sea turtle with an easy going but stubborn, slow moving sea star? You get two people trying to out stubborn each other, and that creates the magic. I live here. You don't, so beat it! Oh no, you can't fool me! This is my rock, and I'm not leaving! <laughs> I love the energy here because they're both right. Obviously, we've seen Patrick with the home more, but a turtle shell is their home. So I was excited to see how their life together would go, and I was not disappointed. They go all out with newer locations that show the lifestyle that Tony used to have. You have Mel's Man Salon, which has a cool design on the outside and inside. We see cool characters that fit the aesthetic, and seeing Tony and Mel interact gave me those old-time vibes that the episode was going for. Patrick didn't stick out like a sore thumb, either. He struggles a lot within the first half, being shaved clean or sweating into dehydration when it goes to the bathhouse. And in both scenes, it was over the top without being gross. And guess what? It was kind of funny. Even small things, like Patrick not being able to crack the shell, felt both like foreshadowing of what's to come, but also a representation of how Tony and Patrick will not crack and let the other take their home. SpongeBob episodes have an interesting history with sleep too. I love Home Sweet Pineapple's jokes where SpongeBob is trying to sleep and Patrick is battling demons via smashing. Spongebob with his rock. I also love Sleepy Time, where Spongebob visits the unique dream dimensions of everyone. But the one episode that's super underrated is in Spongeniac, where Spongebob overthinks his way into undersleeping, and I relate to that a lot. Working on these videos, I end up going all the way into 4, 5, 6 a.m., and one of the problems I'm glad to not deal with anymore is sleep paralysis. That's why I'm grateful that Mantis Sleep has sponsored this video. My personal choice was the OG Sleep Mask, which allowed for me to have a deeper, balanced sleep, easy to adjust just and had no pressure on my eyes or eyelashes at all. Their sleep masks were affordable without feeling cheap, coming along with earplugs and a case. I'm sure a lot of you enjoy sleep, but not just any kind. The nice deep sleep where all the noises you make when you stretch would get this video demonetized. And a sleep mask can be the key to a deeper sleep. So use promo code AlphaJ and get a 10% discount on a Manta sleep mask. The world's comfiest 100% blackout sleep mask guaranteed. You might end up dreaming about Goo Lagoon, which speaking of, whereas in the first half, Patrick took a lot more of the punches, it's Patrick's turn to be a star, pun intended, and he does it without any effort exerted on his part. Mind you, this entire episode builds up that these ladies have been waiting 30 years for Tony to show up. So to have Patrick steal his spotlight not only balances the power struggle between the two, but also has weight because we've seen it built up to over the course of the episode. Some people may look at my video on the title zone and ask, well, what's the difference between those episodes and this episode? I'll put it to you this way, if the title zone did this concept, it would have been Spongebob running around in 1950s bikini bottom except remove all the cool parts you can think of in your head and add in 90% slapstick, 9% empty references to old episodes and attempt to pander to old fans, and 99% hot gas. Basically what I'm trying to say is, because we spend the first 7 minutes building up the story of Tony, Patrick's side of the story, and a payoff to their day being ruined, that's what gives their upcoming fight a reason to exist. And this isn't a regular fight, this fight starts at Goo Lagoon with both of these ladies cheering it on and moves towards the rest of the bikini bottom, including the Krusty Krab, where we get a small SpongeBob appearance. Even though I'm very critical of the Patrick spin-off show, if I got 20 of these, 20 episodes like this, I would have been the biggest fan of the Patrick Star Show. I would have shouted its praise from the rooftops until I got kicked out and become homeless. And speaking of homelessness. Oh. 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 
Yeesh. Couple of babies over here. Man, it'd be the people cheering you on the most that are never there when you're at your lowest. Fake turtle friends. Ironically, throughout this entire fight, their shared tragedy bonds them. And I think it makes sense. A lot of their life was in that home. So to see it broken means that everything they fought for was for nothing. Despite a lackluster ending that feeds into one of the many problems of modern Spongebob, gotta beat that dead seahorse. I love this episode a lot, but it had me thinking, what is the hidden potential in this episode that can bring in more fans and more banger episodes to the show? Simple. If you have to change the lore to add in these different shows and different universes and you have to change Patrick's home? Go all out! Why isn't Tony in the Patrick Star Show? Just picture this, you know Family Guy just running gag between Peter and the chicken, they fight all the time. Imagine something like that but with Patrick and Tony. Maybe they call dibs on the last burger or maybe the rock that Patrick sleeps on in his home was a new home of Tony's or maybe Tony comes back and seeks vengeance by taking Patrick's new home or his family's home. This is what I mean by having Patrick interact with cool characters that don't rely on previous Spongebob knowledge or even Spongebob himself. I mean, come on Nickelodeon, it's banger episodes like this that would ironically make Spongebob no longer a shell of itself.